Hi guys, welcome back to another video or your first video here, I don't know. Welcome if you're new here, welcome either way. So this, it's been a while. Uh, I haven't filmed a video in quite a bit. I've just had a lot of life stuff going on. I thought I'd try out a new angle. This is another aspect of my shelves and I am sitting down because I am quite mentally exhausted. I've had quite a bit going on and so we shall see how this format of video works. So I am going back to film my October 2023 wrap up and I'm going to talk you through all the books that I read in that month. I always film these videos from any books I didn't finish or DNF and then go through from one star up to my favourites at the end. So I'm going to end on a nice positive note. So starting off with some DNFs, the first one I've got is Queer Cosmos. This might seem like a bit of a weird one for me because I don't really uh, subscribe to a lot of the Zodiac written in the star fate uh, stuff, but I read a book fairly similar to this uh, a few months previously called Queer Magic, which wasn't so much about magic in the sense of like witches, but it was more a documentation of queerness and LGBT themes in religious history across the globe and I thought it was really good. Queer Cosmos on the other hand fit way too much into the sort of written in the stars fate stuff that I really don't prescribe to but I think that if that is your thing I really think this could work for you. Next we've got a book called This Is How I Disappear. In this point in the year nothing has stuck out to me about this. I really can't remember what it's about. It's very likely to be that it was a book that I picked up because it was labelled as queer and then the writing or whatever it was didn't work for me so I decided not to continue. If not I'll cut in a clip at this point. Yeah pretty much although it was more the art style that didn't work than the writing. Next one is Book of Queer Prophet. This will be another one very similar to Queer Cosmos where I tried it out just for my information but it was too spiritual for me and my taste but could work for someone. Next we have a book called Night Soil. Again I picked this up because it was labelled as queer and honestly this one really didn't work for me because it was just very dull. The tone didn't match what was really happening. I never really felt in the moment or really connected to anything so I really didn't get that far through this. Next we have Pomegranate. So this one again I picked up because it was labelled as queer and I got a little bit of the way through this and this one I'm, I don't think is bad but it was just incredibly bleak and I don't think that was really what I wanted at that time. Uh, another book we have is Platinum Blood. Now this one I think is probably the only one in here that I could potentially see myself returning to. No, ignore this. I was thinking of another book. I'm just going to cut this out. So oopsie. This next one I know I'm going to pronounce wrong, but it's Beisengast. Beisengast? I'm assuming that's a Germanic word but this is a comic that I or a comic series that I've been wanting to get into for a while because I really love the aesthetic of the front cover but unfortunately the art actually inside the comic doesn't reflect that it's much more sketchy and messy I didn't think it was necessarily bad just not what I, what I was expecting going in I also found the story didn't quite captivate me I remember it was about a, a young girl learning music but it was also potentially possessed by the devil it just it, it wasn't what I wanted so that's all of my DNFs now moving on to my one stars I only have one of those and that is a reread and <laughs> Uh, the reason why I re anyway, it was Belinda Blinked Volume 1. This is the porno novel read by the My Dad Wrote a Porno team in that podcast. And so that podcast is very much a comfort listen to me. And so every time I listen to a season of that, I end up reading with them uh, one of the Belinda Blinked books. Uh, the book follows a woman called Belinda. 
who decides to sleep her way to the top of the pots and pans industry. And yes, they call it pots and pans and not kitchenware. But yeah, if I was giving a star rating to the podcast, it'd be five stars. But this one, um, the book isn't very good. Next, we have my three stars. And I have one. But because it's a sequel to a book in a series that I also read the first book of, and I gave that one a different rating, I'm going to skip to that one. So The Avatar's Flame, I gave 4.5 stars. It was so nearly a five. I really, really enjoyed it. So I picked this one up because I was really wanting something just light and easy and just something I could put on in the background. I heard a phrase recently where I'm like, that really is such a good way of describing books, which is that some books are like junk food. Like they're not particularly well crafted. Maybe not not as much effort went into the crafting of, of them and the planning. and But they're fun and nice and sometimes you just have a craving for it. Uh, that's what I wanted out of this. And I was so pleasantly surprised by how much I really love this and how many themes it covered it's also queer so it follows a young woman who in her youth is witness to a horrible attack on her village she gets horribly injured in this attack as well but she is the only survivor and she is on a mission to rescue those that were kidnapped before the attack took place and she is trying to hone her magical craft in order to accomplish this goal but she is hindered by the disabilities that she gained from that initial attack and the group of friends that she develops it was really wonderful to see this group bond developing i thought that the discussions of judgment and ableism were really good just the interconnecting of all of their relationships they were relatively young characters but it didn't read like a young story and just it was so wonderful to see her learning to coincide with these new disabilities that she had and I really enjoyed it. Now I then went ahead and read the next book in the story, uh, book in the story, next book in the series which was Queen of Ice. Now this one ended up getting three stars and that is not because it was mediocre but because the ending really just rubbed me the wrong way. So all through the book, I thought it was building up to be something that I enjoyed just as much. I think that this book, minus the ending, could have even pushed up to a five star. I was really enjoying it. It was following, obviously, the aftermath of the first book, so I won't spoil what happens. But the way that this book ends was just such a slap in the face. If you don't want spoilers, then just skip this bit while the screen's black and white. But if you do want to know why this one got knocked down, is that the ending of the book is essentially that all of her disabilities get fixed by magic and she gets this brand new body and also, like, they fixed all of her aesthetics. So they changed her face and her hair colour and her eye colour and, and just everything they changed and it was just such a slap in the face to have such good representation in the first book about someone coming to terms with the changes in their body and what they now kind of can't do and using different ways of getting around those things but just yeah it really put a sour taste in my mouth and I won't be reading the last book so next we have a 3.5 stars and that is claimed by the Orc Prince. Again, I wanted a junk food book and this was labelled as queer. Uh, this one follows a prince in a kingdom and in order to form an alliance between the Orc races, he is betrothed to an Orc Prince and the series is split into three. Honestly, this felt like the beginning third of a regular novel. I don't think enough happened in it to actually warrant it being on its own. I had an enjoyable time but I wasn't super motivated to continue. I just thought it was fine. Maybe if it had been included as part of the other two books I would have read on and enjoyed it more but 
especially given the fact that I would then have to pay for each of those separately. I didn't have enough motivation to do that. So now on to some books that I really loved from this month. First of all, for four stars, we have Amora Stories, which is a series of short stories all about love. And I think that the title may make it seem like it's quite vapid and cutesy, but that really wasn't what this was. I thought that all of the stories, I almost want to say were quite serious, but not all of them did take themselves that seriously. I think all of them were really well crafted. I can't tell you much about each individual story at this point. Again, I read this in October and with short stories, the plots often don't stay with me as long as a full length, length novel did, but the reason why this got such a high rating from me is that each of the stories felt really complete. Something about a short story collection is that sometimes they can be written in a way where each story feels like a, an unfinished beginning and the reading process is really unsatisfying. So I had a really satisfying reading experience. All of them were really distinctive and I got a feel for each of the characters in such a short amount of time. It tackled some quite difficult topics. This one is also queer, which I really enjoyed. And yes, I would highly recommend. The next one I haven't written down the full title, so I hope I rem remember this right. It's How to Sell Your Blood and Fall in Love. So this is the second book in a series. That I didn't realise that at the time. I haven't read the first one. Um, I think I will because I did really enjoy this. And this follows a urban fantasy setup following a world with vampires and we are following a character who is a newly changed vampire but he's very agoraphobic he really struggles with the idea of getting blood and he ends up having this deal with someone in order to buy blood directly from them and they enter this sort of weird relationship they're also trying to solve a mystery together because someone is trying to hunt down vampires the reason why this didn't quite get a five is because a lot of the plot hinged on the fact that the main character was deceiving other characters and i don't know if that counts as the missing um miscommunication trope because a lot of what I've seen in that trope is when if characters just sorted it out there would be no conflict or just had one conversation there would be no conflict in the story whatsoever but with this he is intentionally bl being blackmailed. I think that if that does still count as the miscommunication trope it was done very well and I really enjoyed the interactions between him and the other main character. I think that he went on a really interesting journey of learning to cope with his anxiety, his social anxiety, coming to the realisation and the understanding that he is, uh, what's the term, grey asexual or grey or grey sexual, I can't quite remember what the term is, but I've never seen that in a book either and overall it was a really enjoyable read. Next we have Grimm's Manga Volume 1 and Volume 2. So this is a manga adaptation of some of the Grimm's fairy tales. So I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would. Again, I was in the mood for sort of like a, let's call it a junk food book. I wasn't in the mood for anything that was going to make me think that much. And something that I quite liked about this collection or reinterpretation of their stories was the fact that each story was re very reminiscent of the original, but they adapted um, certain aspects of the plot to kind of turn it into something new. And yeah, overall, I would highly enjoy this, especially if you are a big fan of old fairy tales and their reimaginings. Last up for four stars, we have a book that I do actually own in person, and that is The Effect. So this is a play script of a play that me and my sister went to go and see. It is a four-hander following two people in a drug trial for an antidepressant, and it really explores a bunch of themes about depression, treating depression, uh, drug trials. It gives you a lot of perspectives about the pros and cons of taking medication for mental disorders and the ethics of double-blinded double clinical trials. 
and though quite a somber read or watch at times I thought it was just so incredibly well done. I managed to see the National Theatre production of this and if they ever do it again I would highly recommend people go and watch it. So next we are on to 4.5 stars. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. Next we are on to 4.5 stars and this really hit the spot for me in terms of I found a junk food book and this really turned into just a comfort read. So <laughs> I'm talking about a book called How I Stole the Princess's White Knight and Turned Him to Villainy and quite literally I read this 12 times in the month of October. I literally would start it, finish it and then start it again. I think 2023 was definitely the year of rediscovering my love of rereading. The fact that there was such comfort and nostalgia in knowing what had already happened and that it was really soothing if I was ever anxious. So this book I'm not going to be recommending from the rooftop for like hardcore fantasy lovers but I really really enjoyed it. It follows a white knight of a kingdom and to everyone in the outside it seems like he has the perfect situation, he is the most loyal guard to the beloved princess of this kingdom when in reality that is not the case. She is an absolute tyrant and everything he does is to stop her commands from hurting the citizens. The book starts off where one of her orders will lead to a lot of death, he doesn't know where else to turn, so he decides to go to one of the black sorcerers of the realm and beg for his help. The black sorcerer is kind of not what he expected to find and they slowly form an alliance and then a relationship and it's just so wholesome and sweet but also it goes into a lot of topics about duty and sacrificing yourself for the good of others and it was just a lot of fun. I have attempted to read some other books by this author since I discovered this book but none of them so far have really worked for me. I think that this may be an exception to the rule but I also think that I would definitely like to see the other black sorcerers in the story get their own spin-off book relationship and yeah this was just so much fun and finally we have my five stars which one of these I do actually have in person so let me go grab that I know I've talked about this book before but we have Kill the Farm Boy by Delilah S Dawson and Kevin Hearn I love this book and again it's become such a comfort read for me this is not the sort of book where I'm going to be shouting it from the rooftops for serious fantasy lovers, but this is very much the sort of book where the humour really works for me and it pokes fun at standard fantasy tropes. So the book sets up a standard fantasy um, sort of setup where we are following a farm boy. He is anointed as the chosen one by a pixie. He and his talking animal companion then are sent off on a quest but right when he starts this quest he gets into an accident and a bunch of other characters have to then start the real quest in order to fix the situation. And just when I went into it I wasn't expecting to love it as much as I did even though it's really poking fun at all these uh, standard fantasy tropes it still crafts such intricate relationships between all the characters. None of the characters felt sort of um, flat even though they were all caricatures of standard fantasy sort of, um, I don't mean character but like type of character and all of the characters felt really distinct, they all had very different voices when it changed who we were following, it was very clear, it had a queer relationship in it which didn't take over the whole plot but was still really well developed and yes again 
because this really became a comfort read for me. I ended up reading this five times in the month of October. So yes, I really discovered rereading <laughs> in the year 2023. But yes, if this sounds like it could be up your alley, I really, really recommend it. So now on to two more serious ones, but my favourites of the month. So first of all, we have On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. So this is a book that is... I know that there's been a phrase to describe this type of book that's recently sort of been bandied around. I think fictionalised memoir. So sort of writing his experiences as if they were fiction. Anyone who has read this book will tell you how gorgeously written it is. You can tell that this is a fiction book, book written by a incredibly talented poet and I think because of that some people don't quite get into the writing style. I found that listening to this on audiobook really helped me with that. It really helped me get into the flow. It's written as a letter to his mother who can't read and really goes on a deep dive into their relationship. It covers so many topics. It was so heartbreaking. The really complex relationship that he had with with his mother, her experiences of leaving Vietnam and the struggles of someone who has moved to another country where English is not their first language and they're perceived as stupid and the ways in which people get trapped in certain lifestyles because of racism racism and um, Zionism? Is that, the, is that the correct use of that? phrase i'm not sure it also follows ocean and his realization about being queer it follows him and a relationship and honestly that relationship was so beautifully done and multifaceted i felt like so easily this character could have become a villain in the story but i think it was so nuanced again i don't know how much of that is based in reality or um, how much was sort of fictionalized but it was like it was just beautiful on every level and i really recommend it to anyone next and of course another gay book is alpha of mortal flesh so this is the third book in the series oh what's the first book called because the second one was king of the immortal tithe and the first one was I shall put it up here, I can't remember. But I really had no expectations going into this series about anything. I'd never heard of this author. I started it just completely randomly and I so enjoy his style of writing. I think he develops these fantasy worlds and these really strong relationships so well. This one I would say was the hardest to read mainly because we were following a character who was trapped in an abusive relationship at the start and is still trying to escape from it and just the gaslighting and the negging and the physical and emotional abuse he was going through and he had taught himself that he deserved was so difficult to read and also the loops he would go through in his head in order to excuse the behaviour was really upsetting to see and the way that he was policing his behaviour so much in order not to set off a really terrible retaliation from his partner and it was just like a really difficult read in that sense but yeah I just really love this series. I love in each book that even though there's a significant jump in time and place we still get to see updates from the other characters or their descendants. We get to see the interplays in the world that have happened in between the books. So it's sort of a, like a series of companion novels, really. Each one, I would say, could be read independently, but I think that it makes more sense to read them in order. And it was just so well crafted. I really loved this one and I will continue to read the series as many books as um I can't remember the author Ben Ben something 
<laughs> decide to read. Right, even. <laughs> So there you have it. That is my October wrap up from 2023. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know something that... Hmm. Let me know a favourite of 2023 that you had. I would really like to hear it and I will see you in my next video. Bye!